What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the Body Hood Podcast, a webcast, because I don't know how you're consuming this content. I'm your host, as always. My name is Jimmy, and as we start off every show, that is with gratitude. First, want to say Happy New Year to everybody who supports anything we do, and just thank you again. You know, we are always starting with thanks. Um, I got my partner, Crom, in the building with me, Core. Core, what's up, good brother? Not much, man. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024. You know, welcome to our first show of uh, uh, 2024, our first pod of 2024. And, and, you know, continue success if you've been successful, more success if you haven't been as successful if you want to be, and let's go get it. Yeah, man. So, you know, a lot going on, man. Um, You know, this is episode uh, 226 or... 200 in Clinton Portis, you know what I'm saying? Portis references the Clinton Portis. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of number 26. I was going to say maybe Rob Woodson, Clinton Portis, you know. Yeah, Rob like, Woodson, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, no, so um, shout out to everybody from our, our MDC strategy group and shout out to the glue Brianna, who's a member of our group, who also taught a class last night that I set in, which was amazing, which was um. About yeah, mystery, mystery shopping. Mystery shopping. Yeah, man. So she got me out here ready to go snitch on some companies. But with all that being said, though, <laughs> for those that might be tuning in for the first time, our show, we talk about personal finance and black wealth because those are the things that we care about. Um, you know, we just try to have a good time. And if you haven't joined us on a Friday, join us every Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel, or our Facebook page, because um, we do a live show. We kick it, talk about everything known to man. And we do a Bitcoin giveaway. We give away Bitcoin every Friday and have been doing so for a couple of years at this point, man. So, you know, that's, that's something that we take pride in and can't wait to continuously build with our community. With that being said on episode 200 in Clinton Portis, we're going to talk about this article I came across because again, one of the things about personal finance and black wealth is there's a lot of talk about strategies and different um, things you can buy in the last podcast. I even talked about a specific strategy that I use, but this one gets back into like, Kind of the psychology and the, and the real world application of money, because um, you know, shout out to our brother Kamara. He had made a comment the other day and I was reading. I was like, I don't see if I agree with this. He said 90 some odd percent of money problems have nothing to do with money or even financial education. And he said it's about trauma and psychology. Yep. And I was sitting there reading that. I was like, damn, you know, so. And then I saw people commenting um, about it, and I thought it was an interesting. I uh, trust Kamari because Kamari talks about money and deals with money. Every day, all day. Yeah. So his yeah. opinion for me is more valid than most. Yeah, most yeah. But that's interesting because as you talk about personal finance, most people are say that, and this is why it's always interesting when people say that it has to be taught in the schools. You got to teach it young. But um, you know, the psychology and everything of money is is is, is interesting because if that's what the the real root of the problems are that you know people have when it comes to money. I don't know how you address that. Well, the thing is, teaching them young gives them exposure. And so you have less trauma, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can go through a lot of ups and downs and all of that stuff. And you can get that trauma done early. You know what I mean? I ain't going to put nobody business out there. But I was talking to someone um, recently. And they were talking about when they were a kid, when they would get to a store, right? The first thing your mom would say, you better not ask for nothing when you get in here. And they were talking about they didn't realize like how that has affected them even as an adult with their need to hoard money. They were like to the point where like, you know, there's one thing to live under your means. It is one thing to be afraid to spend money. And, you know, through their work on themselves, and they realized that's, that it, that's, it, it, that's, it's that's, a poor, that's poor person 101. Like my mom, we, we would not go into a store like my, my mom would be like this. You're getting two things or one thing or like she would just say. Mm -hmm. Choose what you want because <laughs> you're not getting more than what my yeah. budget says you're getting. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it wasn't never because she, my, my mom, if, if she wasn't going to get us nothing, she wouldn't even take us because she didn't actually want to put us through that trauma. So if we yeah. weren't getting anything, my mom was like, no, you can't go because my budget doesn't allow for you to get something. You know what I mean? Like, no, I get so, that. The interesting thing is like, you know, I've always heard that phrase that your adulthood is spent like getting over things after you in childhood. And that could be good or bad, right? And a lot of times when we think about like things, we think about like, you know, the poverty mindset and mentality. But even when it comes to, you ever seen someone that has a lot of resources and a lot of money, 
and they think that money can kind of get them out of any situation. And then they find themselves in a situation that money can't get them out of every and time. It, and it like messes with them. But that that's another form of trauma, right? You can have trauma even having a lot of resources. Oh, yeah. Right? Listen, we grew up. Well, we grew up with some people who, who you know, I'm talking about high school, who, mm -hmm. who that, that was their that was their life. Yeah. Yeah. So but what I'm saying is like because no one really attacks personal finance or money from um, a psychological standpoint, like a lot of people struggle when it comes to money. And it's not really about knowing how to, right? Because even what I talked about in the last podcast, yo, you could just buy S and P five hundred fund and continue to put into it, and the number, the math works itself out, right? Every single but, time. But but if I'm not dealing with those, those psychological triggers and things that I have um, built up as it pertains to money, it don't matter. Anyway, man, which is why we we always start off every show talking about yo, it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much you keep, which is absolutely true. And that brings me to this article I want to read. Right. So this is an article from Market Watch under the money section. Let me read this to you guys. And for those that are listening, um, I want to read a little bit of the article. And I will also put a link to this article in the description as well as the uh, show notes. So you can take a look at the article. But for those that are watching the video, um, salute to you. Make sure you subscribe, do all the YouTube and stuff. And if you're watching it on Facebook, you know, hey, give us a like and follow over there as well. So the article says, um, <laughs> we live in purgatory. My wife has a multi-million dollar trust fund, but my mother-in-law controls it. We earn $400,000 and spend beyond our means. What is our next move? He says, I worry about how much we are spending on dining out and groceries while at the same time discussing a near $1 million renovation of our apartment. So a little bit more context. Says, I've been with my wife for 15 years. We are in our 40s, have two children, and we're very happy. We both have good jobs and make about 400000 a year combined. My wife's grandfather made a decent sized fortune for himself and left his kids a thriving business and a sizable trust fund. The trust and other investments are controlled by the mother in law, even though they are meant for his wife, right? Which would, you know, be the granddaughter. As we don't have access to them or specific knowledge about them, I've always preached and practiced that we need to budget and live within our means meaning their direct income and, you know, whatever they build savings or whatever. He said, but the knowledge that there's this money, right, in along the lines of the feedback, people always tell them, don't worry about money. It'll be fine. They have started to spend, right, above their means. They live in New York. He said, life in New York's not cheap. And with two kids, we're not getting to the point where there's no more meat left on the bone. They're in the red at the end of the year. And he's worrying about how much spending, uh, dining out and groceries, um, also, the million dollar renovation of their apartment. So uh, they talk about they monitor their credit card spending and they stress out at the end of each cycle. At the same time, they're being CC'd on messages from our family about investment opportunities. And it's not lost on them that they're lucky. All right. So the whole idea and just to kind of like summarize this a little bit more here. Um, <laughs> he talks about them just running up the debt and feeling like, yo, I can't write checks to our credit card companies. Say, Don't worry. My wife's family says it'll be fine. All right. So he wants to know how do they get out of this situation? Because from a, <laughs> from a psychological standpoint, they know they have a windfall coming. So even though they make good money, they live in New York and they're spending it like it's going out of business. So this is what I mean, right? When you talk about it a lot of times we, we talk about poverty, right? And we talk about like, you know, um, some of the psychological parts of poverty. But what about this? When you and your wife make 400000 that puts them like you know as something that, as a high income earner. They're considered high income earners, right? Yes, they are. But they're broke, but yeah. they know they know they have a trust coming to them, but it doesn't come to them until it comes to them. So in the meantime, they're just blowing money fast, and they don't have any specific knowledge of it. So that's the thing. Like, how, the first thing they got to do is figure out when or if, well, not even if, when that money is supposedly supposed to come to them. Like they, they gotta have some kind of something in writing where they get to understand when that is, is supposed to happen and, I seen a very, and, and I seen not a have way. somebody keep telling them not to worry. No, bro. I need to know what's going on so I can plan my, like how am I supposed to plan my financial future when I know I got a million dollars, but I don't know when it's coming. Like how, how does that work? Listen, bro. I seen a version of this in the hood. Where dudes be like, 
I ain't leaving my mom crib. Like they literally wait their mom out until she passed so they yes. can have their own crib. Like they I've seen a version of that in the hood several times, right? Um, this is problematic, right? So for everybody watching I I, or listening, I'd love to know what you think about a situation like this, right? Where you have the high income, you know you have money that you will inherit eventually. <laughs> um and knowing that having that knowledge that you have a fortune coming to you, you just blow whatever's coming in and you're out of control. So the answer to me is um, the first thing about um, getting out of a hole is to stop digging. Right. And which takes discipline. That's easier said than done. But you can't just rely on that bread. Like you got to look at you have to look at that as a bonus. Right. And you got to use that income that you have now. And again, you know, living in New York. That's crazy because you know what the expense is living in New York. And they got two kids. Man. I thought yeah. this was an interesting article because it's like, yo, people who actually have achieved the point of having higher income. Still living like, still 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 like in, 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 yep. in abject poverty because they can't. <laughs> yo, and then, listen, I can't talk because my life, I've lived that life where mm -hmm. between, you know, myself and my wife, we've made. A nice amount of money. I won't put it out there so the government don't tap me in yeah. my pocket. But, um, and at the end of the year, I was like, man, what the hell do we got? Like, you know, I always have assets, but like, I'm not, I'll be like, I'm not sure what we actually have though. Like, and so, and I do a good job of tracking my money, but it's not about being able to track my money. It's more about being able to track all the expenses that because, you know, I got four kids. So me tracking my personal expenses is easy because mm -hmm. I know what I spend money. on. You know what I mean? Like that's nothing. And then tracking my family expenses, it gets a little wonky because, you know, sometimes I don't know when my wife spends money on my kids or when she goes to get her hair and nails done or when she like so. And it's not that I don't want her to do those things, but for me budgeting it makes it weird because i'm not i don't know but it's well, well here's the thing right in my experience and again this is just my experience a lot of times people who are are, are terrible at money are those that actually make a lot of it i had a um a person i was working with one time who was a um hairdresser and she told me she was like i stay making money but she was like because one thing about black women, they don't get their hair tossed, right? <laughs> so, facts. so she said, but the problem is the money came so fast that she would just spend because in her head, she's like, I'll get that back in two days. You know what I mean? So it wasn't, but but the thing is, it doesn't matter. That's why we end our show off the way we do. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much, you, how keep. much you can keep. Because if you're you make four hundred thousand a year, but you're spending four hundred one thousand, you're broke. You're, like, down, you're like, down a thousand every year. You down sixty dollars a month, <laughs> like you just, you know what I mean? Like you down yeah. 50, 40, 50 dollars a month. So it, it doesn't matter if you make five hundred million dollars. Like mm -hmm. a lot of these companies are broke. Like yeah, we talking about personal finance, right? The companies that y'all love and enjoy, a lot of them companies are broke. <laughs> like they they make four hundred million and they spend six hundred and seventy five million. They do. They what they'll do is they'll tell you they're growth companies. We're doing this to grow, right? But that's the same thing. That's the same thing that people do too, though. It's literally, it's the same. No, that's the same people it's the do. Same, it's the same move, right? These they fiscally irresponsible, and and it makes no. It's the same thing that people do. These company people and companies are aligned when it comes to finance, right? Because bad companies and are governments and governments, right? Yeah, they grow too. Governments do the same thing. It's like yeah, the difference is they can print more when they run out. They like yo, but let's 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 I print mean, some more. Listen, that's 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 but, but, getting over there. But, yeah, but it, all of them it, it all aligns because it's all emotional. Like like Kamari said, right? The government spends because they know they can print more. That's an emotional response. You know what I mean? If the it, you know the the person who makes five hundred thousand dollars and and spends five hundred and one. That's an emotional response to having that money. That's a traumatic response. You know what I mean? It's, it's funny you say that because people are very similar. I mean, at the end of the day, corporations are people, right? 
Yeah. Because even when it comes to like chasing the next fad and spending money on this or investing in things, just be chasing lottery. Companies do it too. I was having a conversation on uh, Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, with a lady the other day. She um buys small businesses and scales them up, yada, yada, yada. So we we're just in the conversation. She was laughing. She was talking about how much money is being poured into AI because it's the next thing. And most of the stuff's not going to work. It'll be a couple companies that will pop through. But she was like, meanwhile, she's like, I'm out here still buying laundry mats and cleaners and making millions of dollars on stuff that just works while everybody is chasing. The, you know what I mean? Like it kind of goes to the same thing that people do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just an interesting uh, article, uh, interesting conversation, because this is a situation where someone makes good money. They have um, money coming to them from you know, past generations, which is a good thing overall, but they they can't get out of their own way. So, no, for you, sure. you know, so I, I dirty say, you know, because you the, know, the thing is, the, but the, 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 the purgatory part, right? The, that's why I, and, and, and so when he said we live in purgatory, like they live, they are in purgatory because they don't know. Like that's the thing that puts them in purgatory. Not knowing is the thing that puts them in purgatory. <laughs> right, because if they had any idea about when and how much, you know what I mean, then it wouldn't be purgatory. Yeah, I, I sat on a panel in um in a, in Atlantic City this in 2023, and we were you know it was finance talking yada yada yada, and <laughs> people were asking me, so they asked me a question about how to build wealth or whatever it was, save money, blah blah blah, and they were waiting for this like elaborate answer with all these different strategies, and I was like, well, how many people in here? know how much money they have coming in and what they have going out, have it and have it written down. It was like, yo, a room of a couple hundred people, maybe like 10, 15. And I'm like, well, that's the problem right there. Right. They're, they're, this is where we start at. Right. Yeah. No matter how much you make, you got to have a budget. And that's the thing. People feel like I ain't trying to budget. Like, you know, and, and, and then there's the whole thing that you see online. Like you shouldn't need a budget. Just expand your means and where like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't That's, matter. It doesn't matter. How million dollar companies have, have a budget. To out. Yeah, income expenses. They have to have PLs. As an individual, you need to know where your money is going. Um, so to me, that that's what this really fine. And I guess he is living in purgatory to your point, but they gotta start trying to get stuff together and don't even worry, ignore that fun. Yo, y'all gotta even if that means like you may have to scale down or or, or do that. Apartments thing. just don't get rental. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> a million dollar renovation? We can't even pay credit card. Like, are you yeah, talking about million a million dollar, dollar renovation? renovation? Like, are you serious? Like, listen to how crazy that sounds from someone else, right? Like, <laughs> when when I be having conversations about money, right, and then. Like somebody tell me crazy about money. I said, all right, listen to me say it. Does it sound crazy when it comes out of my mouth? It might not sound crazy in your head, right? But when it comes out of my mouth, does it sound crazy? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if it sounds crazy coming out of my mouth, that's because it's crazy in your head, but you just don't recognize how crazy it is. Yeah. Right? Like if you telling me that we don't got enough money for groceries and we, we struggling to pay bills at the end of the month, and then you also telling me that we got money to do x y and z hold on hold on hold on hold on let me let me say that to you out loud you don't have money for groceries you don't have money for your your, your basic necessities but you're doing whatever it is you're doing does that sound crazy to you if i told you you got a hundred dollars right mm -hmm. your rent is forty dollars and all the rest of your bills is fifty dollars but then also you got you got tickets to the Knicks game that cost twenty dollars. Would you spend the twenty dollars on the Knicks game, right? Yeah. If you're telling me that you would spend twenty dollars on the Knicks game, I'm telling you that something is not going to get paid in your crib. Like, yeah. are you are you going like it's a hundred dollars? You got, that's all you got. How are you going to make? How are you going to make that? You know what's going to go away? Yeah. So you got something got to go away for you to get under that. And then you still haven't paid yourself. All you did was pay your bills. You still don't have any savings or anything else to go with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like it's, sometimes it's like spitting in the wind because all you do is get wet when you talk. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like spitting in the wind. Like, That's one of them old head, uh, old head sayings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just get all wet right, so when you talk.
So listen, um, I just want to, you know, bring this bring this to the conversation for this podcast as we start off 2024. Um, listen, I'm hoping everybody has a, a great 2024. Um, but let's let's start talking about the psychology of money more in 2024, right? And not and and, and we can still talk about strategies and and you know everybody wants to know how to be your own bank and how to you know burr strategy and all these different things as it, as it relates to these different asset classes. But and nothing is wrong with that. No, no, but sometimes we got to get down. We got to get to the foundation. Nitty right? and gritty. This is why we do our camp. Absolutely. For those who don't know our camp, coming up in 2024, you know, we're in January now. So we what, about six months out. In six months, we'll have our camp. This will be our 10th year. Yeah. 10th year. 10th year. 10th yeah, camp. This will be our 10th camp, the 2024 uh, Body Hood Ownership Camp. Man, um, I start working on it now. I didn't realize like that's like six months out. But yeah, we, yeah, we man, like, hey, yo, yo, this is on. normally when we start working on our camp. So yeah, how about that? I didn't even yo, time is just flying by. Also, also, um, in in February, so it's a month out. Um, our investment club is hosting them a, a screening session for a documentary here in Philly. So if you want more information about that, let me know. We got something coming up in um in February with our investment club, but a lot of stuff will be going on in 2024, but um what I want to know from you guys who are listening or watching to this uh, specific episode is what do you think about people who are high income earners and still are terrible with money? Right. <laughs> like, are you one of those people? Right. And also, what do you think about the psychology of money? Could you let us know how, you know, how your upbringing or um, let's just say your environment has affected you as it pertains to money, the whole nature versus nurture. Um, I was having that conversation with my wife the other day. I was like, do you think that, it could be just in someone's nature to be good with money. Like they're just born because of their genetic makeup or, or is it all nurture? Oh, I know you a nurture guy. You don't believe in like, so you don't think nothing. So let me ask you this question. I'm not trying to turn this to a psychology. I know you might have psychology and all that, but the whole nature versus nurture thing, right? Um, What kind of things do you think that nature can be responsible for? Anything that's auto. Such as? Breathing. <laughs> like, wow! Like so you don't think that people just are inherently better at certain things based upon their gen genetic. Anything that's genetic, or you know what I mean, like if it's genetic, or or or, or you know anything that's automatic that happens inside you, then yeah, I think that's nature, right? But I think ninety nine percent of it is nurture, right? Because we have natural talents that we have that we never get to because of our environment. So I just wondered. I, I just still, wondered, right? Because like, I know I know studies listen, have been done. Listen, athletically, the, Ven the Venus and Serena, right, were they could have played any sport as a girl. They could have played soccer or whatever, but they were nurtured into being tennis players, right? So they were good at it. They were the best at it, right? Tiger Woods was the same way. When he was three and four years old, his dad put him on a golf course. That's nurtured, right? So, like, the same thing with money is the sooner you start teaching about it, if you teach a three-year-old about money and the, and the importance of money, or you teach a five-year-old about the importance of money, then when they get to be... I'm not disagreeing with the nurture part, but I have read studies, right, when it, when it comes to, like, um, people just are predisposed for certain things, right? So such as addiction, right? That's, that's that genetic. Are, that's what I was saying. Anything genetic, you don't have a... You don't, but that's my point. My point is... What other things could be genetic? I guess that's what I, I don't have an answer. I always think this out loud though. Like, is it possible for someone just to just be genetically predisposed to being like great with math or money? I mean, right? that's what your parents that's get. I don't, I mean, your parents have a I'm talking about just nature, not nurture, just nature, like just because just because of the thing your is, genetic makeup. I think I think a lot of people have gifts given to them genetically, but because it wasn't nurtured, you you never see them. So they, it's there. It's I mean, there. I, I guess, I guess, but see, that's the thing. That's why. I, like, so right. So like, listen, I'm I've seen a lot of I've, seen, I've, I've seen some folks that are like, you know, um, end up in jail for catching a body, and it's like, yo, I knew him when he was a kid. He was born that way. He been crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> and his environment or their environment contributed to it, right? All right. So, 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 but, but again, that's the whole thing of nature. I, you know, what you know again biology has a lot to do with that right because it's everything is about how you react to whatever happens in your environment 
So everything is a reaction to stimulus. Every single thing that we do is a reaction to stimulus. Yeah, but I, I'm. I guess the question I was asking as we start to have these conversations about money, like, what, could could it be possible? And again, I don't know the answer. Maybe somebody can answer that that's listening or watching. And we start to talk about nature versus nurture. Can it be a part of that in finance? I already agree that nurture is a huge part of it. Environment is everything. Environment is everything with everything, right? But there's parts of us that are just like you know, based upon our genetic makeup, our biology, um, that puts us in position to, you know, kind of excel or, you know, struggle with certain things. Anyway, just a thought. I'm just thinking out loud. No, no, no. Listen, Listen, like I said, I, genetic, I the genetic predisposition is a thing. I'm not saying that that does not exist. But when I I'm think saying, the psychology of finance is just the most interesting part about finance. To me, the psychology of anything is the most interesting part because it controls everything. Yeah. All right, man. So let's not, let's let's stop pontificating while we because <laughs> me and Corey we pontificating two hours all, you know, so we, all day and all night. Listen, yeah. man, I deal in mental health, so I you know that's uh, we listen, can do this for we could do this. I we, I I love to do that show. Uh, listen, I, I I tell people like you know um, Maslow solved a lot of our issues long time ago, right? Because that 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 just narrows down to everything. But with that being said, everybody out there, listen. I'm hoping that you have um, you're already having a great. 2024 you'll continue to have a great 2024 stay in tune with us please subscribe to our youtube channel um hit us up on social media share this video like this video give us some feedback read the article let us know what you think about the psychology of finance and what it looks like when someone um has great income has assets coming to them but don't know how to get out of their own way i would love to get some feedback on that um corey last words we got here just you know love each other enough not to do harm to each other this year there you know what I mean? because you know a lot of people out here doing harm on purpose to other people and i ain't even talking about physical harm i'm talking about you know the internet and i'm talking about you know people that know other people and and, and, and just doing all kinds of weird and crazy like stay out of that it's 2024 like come on you come on man i know you still working through your childhood traumas as an adult but Jesus, come on, man. Like, when you going to start getting it together? Like, love each other enough not to do that to each other. All right, man. So with that being said, um, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And as we always say, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep. Game elevates. We'll see you guys in our next episode. Peace.